Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Utpal and I am a landscape photography enthusiast. So few weeks earlier I have posted a picture which is this in uh, Facebook and other social media sites uh, and uh, 500px and other such image, image uh, storing sites and uh, there were a few feedbacks that came in where they were interested in how this picture has been post processed. So today uh, my goal is to show you how this has been post processed. Uh, so this has been shot this summer uh, near the Brahmaputra river and, uh, in Assam and uh, this has been shot in the rainy summer season so you get the sunshine and all of a sudden as you can see in this picture there were clouds also here uh, so rain is never far away so i got a break in the weather to go here in this location this uh, this path probably is a embankment against floods and uh, you know uh, as people ride through this or even walk through this uh, it creates a path and kind of creates an interesting image so uh, my interest actually grew in this location because i raked it once again earlier and uh, the ferns here were quite, quite tall um, because they usually chop it off before the rainy season starts where the ferns try to kind of overgrow but again after coming back and waiting for a couple of weeks i went back there and uh, i saw that the ferns were somewhat growing up and i thought why not make a picture out of it so the interesting part is this path always creates a interesting leading line to the horizon and the bank on the other side the river bank on the other side kind of meets the horizon on uh, this point which is very interesting which looked very interesting to me and uh, i always knew that during or before right before the sunset it will cast a really glowy uh, light in the ferns here and the trees that kind of uh, sideline the path so it kind of uh, created a good image probably or good scene Without kind of uh, waiting furthermore, uh, let's jump into how I took this picture and how I created this picture. So this picture actually came from this, which is the one shot that I've taken for the sunburst and uh, the overall composition and it went to this. Actually the this image is a little bit cropped, the actual image is something like this so let me start working on this image uh, and show you how i created this image so initially what i've done is i've taken one shot and i think uh, i do not remember the exact specifications uh, this was shot in a crop sensor body it's a nikon d7200 uh, tied up with a uh, Tokina 1116 landscape extreme wide angle lens and I think I shot it in 15 mm or something uh, but uh, going back to my post processing part so here you will see that I have taken the first shot which has got the sunburst which I have shot in I think f20 to get the sunburst for this lens f20 uh, was good enough to take the sunburst and uh, then I have taken another shot because you can see that there is some bit of uh, player here uh, which kind of creates a weird artifact on these sides and also in here somewhere. So what I've done is uh, I've taken another shot using the, this is a technique of uh, putting the finger in front of uh, the sun or the brightest object in your uh, picture which is creating this uh, uh, flare and then kind of uh, taking one picture with the same specification and same settings uh, that we have for the first one and then uh, i've taken that which kind of uh, avoids the sun flares as you can see here there is no sun flare as you see in the previous one that they had so i've taken that picture and using a mask what i've done is let me show you the mask so what i've done is i've hidden everything and just only kind of reveal those areas where there was uh, the sun flare 
So this area, this area, this area, I have taken a white brush and kind of brushed in the areas that I want to reveal from this picture, therefore uh, reducing or kind of omitting the sun flare as you can see here. So that kind of takes care of the sun flare, which is the first step. The second step is to uh, introduce the actual time blend. So this uh, picture, I wanted to do a time blend because this uh, area looks very interesting and the river flowing besides it always gives a good perspective. So what I've done is I've taken this picture. Uh, I think it's uh, right before the blue hour starts. As you can see, the sun has gone down and there's a red glow in here. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but it's there. There's a red glow in the clouds, right above the clouds. So what I've done is I've taken a long exposure because uh, I have to match the uh, exp uh, kind of exposure. Uh, I mean, like the light values uh, on, on this picture and this picture. So uh, what to do that I have uh, kind of reason the ISO and uh, still I was getting a little bit darker. So I've taken a long exposure, which magically and uh, for my luck has introduced a little bit of streaky situation here in uh, the river which is really interesting and uh, what I've done is I have tried to use a mask uh, let me show you the mask I've used tried to use a luminosity mask here to get the brightest part at least the parts that I want to borrow from this image uh to overlay on top of the one that uh was earlier so i have taken the sky because as you can see from this picture uh you can see that the sky is all blown out and uh, the river itself is also blown out so to bring in some balance into the picture i've taken this time shot and it also brings another dimension to the picture and another difficulty technical difficulty to this picture which uh, kind of was interesting so after doing this i had the initial or the basic blend of this picture so what i've done is uh, i have taken another so after doing this i believe uh, what i've done is i have merged all these three into one shot and uh, i have taken uh, this picture which let me go to the normal blend so this is a black and white uh, I think the opacity has been reduced to 80 because I want to reduce the uh, uh, effect. So what I, why I did the black and white because I wanted to bring in some level of contrast in these areas because as you can see this was quite a blend picture. It was more of a high dynamic range picture but I wanted to bring some contrast in the area which interested me a lot because these ferns were like glowing on that day. So what I've done is I've been in black and white and then I changed the blending mode to color dodge and then furthermore to only have the effect in these areas because this is really ugly I do not want this only I want this area to be having this effect so I use the uh, luminosity mask to get this done so here is the luminosity mask so now it is there somewhere as a complete picture so this is what my final picture used to be but i never stop my my workflow goes a little bit ahead of that so uh in my workflow what i've done is uh, now to enhance and warm up the situation so here you can see this part is really kind of gloomy and i wanted to warm up the space a little bit because that is what i wanted to show the usual summer situation uh, the summer glow so I have used a curved adjustment layer and kind of brought in, kind of enhanced the mid-tones and uh, kind of adjusted the color to warmer tones a little bit. And I have used a mask to show only those areas. So this is where you see, you know, uh, like the glow is there. Uh, I brought back the glow that was there that day. And uh, this is uh, the way that I wanted the picture to be. But as you can see, this I just brought in the colors. So if you move it to normal, you will see that uh, the luminosity was also getting affected in the same layer, which I did not want. I just wanted to isolate the color and the luminosity separately. So what I've done is I have used color blend here. Uh, the blending mode of the layer as color so that it only takes the colors uh, that I have affected here. And then Finally, because I want to brighten up the picture a little bit and also bring in some more, uh, you know, light into the warmth. 
so uh, these shadow areas these shadows areas were kind of uh, you know too dark i mean for my liking so what i've done is i have used the same uh, layer i duplicated this and this time rather than using uh, color i have used the blend mode as luminosity so that way it only kind of brings in the light and not uh, the color so and to restrict the mask because the mask is quite widespread so to restrict the mask i have used a folder and uh, the additional mask on the mask is called masking the mask so i have used another mask on the folder and put the layer inside the folder to control the mask and only show up in as you can see the difference if you can see in the video only brighten up the shadow areas and this was my final take this was my final take so uh, i just kind of posted these uh, this image oh one more thing so what i've done is uh, this area this area was kind of uh, you know uh, expanding in the image too much which i did not want i want the image to be kind of only showing the sunburst and the path going there so this was a little bit di diverting so what i've done is i have cropped the image in this section so you know uh, let me do that so what i've done is crop to a little bit squarish shape so that you know it gets the attention more into the path and the sun star and this tree was also very interesting so i brought in all these subjects very close to each other and kind of compressed the image a little bit uh, so that my eyes does not kind of uh, flow all over the place so this is what my final picture looked like so I posted this in some of my uh, usual uh, social networking sites and uh, like few of the other sites like 500px and others. And one of my um, online reviewer, I would say, not the reviewer, he is a very good photographer so I never asked him to review it but maybe he liked it and he wanted to kind of show me a way to kind of do it better. So what happens here is because I was uh, kind of uh, processing this with a black background, I was not kind of feeling the deepness of this picture. So it came out quite dark to him because if you see in the social media or in any other place, you will see a white background. So in contrast to the white uh, black background, the white background kind of darkens the picture a lot. The shadows were not coming out right and everything. So this was actually kind of shown to me by the gentleman. And uh, you know, he asked why don't you process it. And I said why not? Learning never stops. So what I've done is I have taken another uh, curved adjustment layer and only masked those areas. Let me show you the curved adjustment layer. So this is the curved adjustment layer where again I have enhanced the uh, mid-tones. Not to attend to the mid-tones but at least to have some some kind of enhancement or some kind of light to be thrown into the shadows so this is the shadow area as you can see the spike here so this actually kind of brought in a little bit mid-tone and shadow in uh, somewhere the interval in between that's what i tried to kind of bring up uh, and then adjusted some of the colors uh, for additional one and then i used a mask so i'll show you the mask probably uh, yeah, I use this mask to only kind of have the effect in the shadows uh, not the actual shadow of the tree because that's what I liked a lot and uh, it reduces uh, the noise levels in here uh, the tree was quite dark so if I kind of enhance it or if I kind of put a lot of light in there then uh, the noise was quite prominent so uh, if I uh, kind of light up the tree trunk because it was quite dark and silhouetted i mean uh, there will be a lot of noise so i avoided uh, the tree trunk using a mask and only kind of had the effect uh, in the shadow areas of the ferns and uh, some of the tree tops here and uh, the far away shadow area over here and i also added some on these uh, kind of side lines of the path so this grass here so this actually became my final image. Uh, I used my signature here on the bottom, so which I usually do. Uh, and that's it. So this is my final picture. So let me show you again uh, where I was. And 
what it became. So this is what for me is more of a time blend. So time blending is an interesting technique that I have learned from a famous travel photographer uh, Eli Lockerty. It was very interesting. It was very interesting to me and I always thought why don't I try this. So I was not an expert on post-processing. So as I grew and my skills grew, so I challenged myself to have this. So finally, I have done this time blend. Hopefully you like my post-processing techniques and uh, my workflow. If you like this content, don't forget to click on the like button below and please subscribe to my channel so that you get to see more of these uh, videos. And uh, I would really appreciate a comment suggesting me things that I should work on and videos that you would like to see and techniques that you would like to know from me. And if I know that, I'm open to share with everyone. Thank you for your time and have a good time ahead. Keep shooting.